I'm James Sykes, CEO of Baseload Energy, live at PDAC 2022. It's, it's an exciting event. You can probably hear all the buzz in the background. We're happy to be here. We're, we're promoting our Accio uranium discovery, which has some near surface uranium mineralization, excellent potential for open pit mineralization. And here to help tell the story a little bit better is the host who knows the most, Mr. Matthew. Go on. Let's do it, man. Right. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I'm here, folks. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm dialing into some of the companies um, that we have enjoyed talking to over the last, uh, you know, year or so. You know, since, since the 20, 2020, um, uh, e you know, easy years. We're now in difficult times, right? So, what I what I like to look to is companies with strong, strong fundamentals, strong management teams with with good assets, right? Because they will do better um, in, in the long run. So. Let, I've seen some of the press releases, all kind of good stuff, but what are people on the ground asking you? There's a lot of investors there, a lot of companies there. What, what, what's the main chat? The big question that we keep getting is why we're putting out some of the longer results, what they all mean, and how that relates to grades and with the grades that we've put out in the past. So we'll kind of answer each of those. The scintillometer results is something any company would do. That's, you know, despite what anybody says, you've seen it in the past, you've seen it with every other company who have hit mineralization this year. They've put out either gamma probe results or handheld scintillometer results. That's just something that goes back for you know, decades now. That's really half our exploration when they were defining the Rough Rider. That was, that was how we got news out. Instead of waiting for assays, it's, it's, uh, it's something that really benefits the uranium side of things and a lot of people don't understand and that's that's kind of the, where the difficulty comes in but the easiest way to explain is the higher the radioactivity levels the better the uranium mineralization so long as it's all uranium and typically whenever you see 10,000 counts per second from a handheld scintillometer not a gamma probe then that's going to be well over one percent you three away that's one of the only comparisons you can really make is you can't tie the two directly in. So with what we're trying to do is develop that CPS to your three weight ratio and have that as something that, that can guide people down the road. Well, right. We need the assays to come back for that. Yeah. Look at, look at, look speaking at, about the assays. Yeah, let, let, let's let's do that because like I think the scintillometer thing, people are kind of wrapping their heads out. A lot of people are kind of copying uh, you in um, pr promoting that measurement first, right? So we've, we've talked about that with a few companies. But here's here's the thing, that, of course, and I keep getting asked about you, which is around great. You've got a low grade project, so th th surely that's the big problem for you. I don't consider it a problem at all. I, I think one of the problems is that people have been they've been deluded into thinking that you need a high grade in the Athabasca. But that's not the situation. You have to look at the history of it. You have to look at the economics of the Athabasca. The vast majority of the mines have all been open pit or decline accessible in basement rocks. There's only two mines with shafts in the entire Athabasca, and that's MacArthur River, Cigar Lake, which both have over 20%. Look at the amount of deposits that have sandstone cover that have 1% grades, 5% grades, 10% grades. Where do they sit? They're still not developed, and they haven't been. Some of those haven't been developed for 50 odd years. So it's it comes back to to economics. Open pits with 100 meter sandstone cover, they can go, and they usually have over 1% grade. But even shallower mineralization, something like Rabbit Lake, had 0.2 to 0.25 percent average grade. That was a 40 million pound. That built the mill for the for the Collins Bay deposits to be mined out. It built the mill for the Eagle Point deposit to be mined out. You have Clough Lake, which also had a number of open pits at around that 0.3 to 0.35 percent, which built the mills as well, but also allowed for decline access into underground mines. You got the same story in the Uranium City: open pits and declines. They were all 0.2 to 0.25 percent. So there's a, a really good history and a great story of having open pit and decline accessibility with grades that are between 0.2 and 0.4 percent if you want an even interesting number to really help put that into perspective let's look at a gold equivalency because everybody understands gold if you assume if let's assume 0.2 percent at accu just just for giggle's sake we don't have assays so we don't know 0.2 is a it's a nice conservative low number and if you assume a 60 dollar contract price 60 dollars per pound of uranium which i honestly believe would be the low end of contract prices that we'll see in the future and then you use $1,800 an ounce of gold, which is roughly today's value, that 0.2% has a 4.6 gram per ton gold equivalency. So if you're talking about something that, uh, such as Accu, which has open pit 
uh, characteristics, and you're talking about an average uh, gold equivalent is at 4.6 grams per ton. That's a lot of value. That's like $250 per ton. So grade, you know, when you're when you're putting the grade into the Athabasca standards, yeah, it's, it's low. But put it into context across the globe with with similar economics in, in states and in Australia where they're mining things at 0.1% and 0.2%. Anything 0.2 and higher really starts to make sense. Okay, so, so, so tell me this then. Um, okay, you, you, you're... you're, you're Trying to reference this against low-grade gold operations, and I think that's smart. Okay, uh, I think all of a sudden I think people That'd could be a high-grade gold operation. Well, well, I know, but in 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 terms of you know, if you mine for like point point two gold, right? Is that 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 was the example you gave? No, point two U three hundred eight has the same dollar value as four point six grams per ton. Got it. Okay, Un- understood. Understood. Okay. Um, yeah. Right. So so, so this low-grade low uranium has the same equivalency as high-grade gold. Got it. Around, around, you know, between between four and five. Okay, brilliant. That's a really good analogy. So, you're saying going forward, the kind of the the capex and the opex will be significantly less because you don't have so much overburden. You don't have to get through so much sandstone, and you're not so sort of spending money to get at the goods, as it were. Um, but the other, the other thing that the kind of gold analogy um, needs to be able to do is say, hey, we've we, we've done the met work, and we understand what the recoveries will be. You're going to have to get to a point where you can sort of demonstrate that to market. So now you've won. The, well, I, I see it. You, you, you like to think you've won. You won the kind of grade argument. And say, okay, now try and understand where we're at. But in terms of what, how much we can recover and what the technical difficulty is, when do we get to see that? Probably next year. It, it's too early for us to start that. Although we might start doing, uh, we might start doing that later on this year. I was looking at doing some sort of an initiation study, see if we can really amp up. Uh, you know, taking a homogenized sample and see if we can get to uh, producing something with uh, between three and a three and a half percent average grade. So then that would be optimized for the Key Lake Mill. So kind of going down that route. And in doing so, we would need to know the mineralogy and we wouldn't know recovery, but by knowing the mineralogy right off the bat, that should help. That should help understand if what we have is uh, would be recoverable in the current mills. So I use Key Lake Mill as, as an example, just throwing it out there. Honestly, we're, we're well, yeah, we're, we're not in talks with Canco. It's just a hypothetical idea that you know, if we can mine Accio, then it'd be shipped down to Key Lake Mill. Right. Uh, okay. Try. Yeah. We 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 would definitely need to know that. It's not saying right away. But it, it's something that is in the back of our minds because we, we do humbly believe in what we have at Accio. Right. Okay. I mentioned right at the outset, this is a difficult market compared to 2020 when you you, you know you, most companies did really, really well. It was, you know, the momentum was there, the enthusiasm was there, money was there, it was all easy. It just got real. Uh, it got real in and, 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 and a really tough way. And there has been some MA. We've seen some MA. We've seen something recently with you know, UEC, UEX. I think we're all waiting to sit back and see what the plan is there because it's not, not immediately apparent to most, I, I, I suspect. Um, but there's also a lot of new entrants coming into the uranium junior space uh, as well. And there's, you know, there's a little bit of jumping aboard the bandwagon, hoping to take, take advantage of that without necessarily being able to do anything. So how do you, in all of that white noise, stand out from all of these other investments that will be possible for, you know, whether it be retail family office or institutional investors looking into this space, which is a relatively small space within mining, which in itself is a relatively small industry too. So how, how do you stand out? What's different about you? That's really how the company came because exactly the question that we answered when we put this company together. How are we going to stand out amongst all these peers? How are you going to go against people who've been in the industry for 10 years, 15 years, who've got projects already situated? How are you going to go up beside them and say, hey, you know, come on, investors, give us your money instead? So that's when we developed the Athabasca 2.0 idea. That it, it, it's something that people have found in the past, but I don't think people have been looking for in more recent history. And that's just based on the idea that the Athabasca Basin was a lot larger. There's potential for sub-basins outside the current day Athabasca. And so it's just a matter of having a different thought that the that the unconformity didn't continue up like this from where it is nowadays, that it was more flat line. So you can have all of these near surface deposits. And so even at my time at, at NextGen working on Arrow, is if you carved off 300 meters of the upper material and brought Arrow near a surface, is that a possibility that can exist outside the Athabasca Basin? 
just these near surface high grade uranium deposits. So after that, it was just a matter of really focusing on the, the structures and what is going to allow fluids to move into these basement rocks. And that's how we staked all of our projects. And that's how we've differentiated ourselves from all of our peers. Is we've come up with a thesis that I think has a lot of sound technolo- uh, technical uh, knowledge behind it and seems quite reasonable. And with the Accio discovery, I think that's really holding true. Right. So, so in, t- in terms of showing the market what you're capable of, look, you, you obviously, I think Charlotte's taking a bit of a backseat, you know, for, for First Nations consultation period going through there. Catharsis also, I guess, taking a bit of a backseat. Does the, does the Accio um, project need to be, I mean, What's the story you need to tell there to say to the market, look, we we think we can get something which will actually get into production, not be another one of these, you know, Collins Bay, or not so Collins Bay, um, like, you know, Sioux, um, A, B, and C, and Key Lake, et cetera, which, um, you, you know, perhaps perhaps don't don't have what you've got. So w- w- what what is it that you're saying to investors? Say, look, I think we can build something which will get into production at, at some point, not just be a let's try and build value but never actually reach the ultimate goal of producing uranium or E308 in a can. That's pretty well exactly what we're trying to tell investors, that we're not out to make the next discovery, we're out to, we're out to find the next mine. And that's the big difference in the Athabasca. There's a lot of things that don't move. So with Athabasca 2.0, that was the strategy behind it, was to find a mine, something that can move. And open pits are the way to do it. It's, but now with Accio, we're still quite a ways away. We really need to find it and see how many pounds are there. Uh, if there's not pounds, nothing ever moves. That's just the, the simple simple way the market work, works but we've now made this near surface discovery so that's going to be a big focus for us because if, if we're only dealing with 25 meters 35 meters of overburden material that's that's a pretty good strip ratio when you've got 25 meters 35 meters of mineralization right beneath them. so if we can define that into a sizable sizable resource then we're, we're hopeful something like that, like that can't get mined but then we've also got the the bulk of the mineralization which is lower than that so it's it's kind of a two pronged fork right now with potential for building on more prongs with, with further exploration. But that's that's what we have to focus on now is just really proving what we have can work, will work, and just drill. That's all we can do right now. Okay. So you, with everything we've just said um, in the past few minutes, um, how's money? Where does that take you through to? What are you doing with it? Fully cashed up still. We had about 15 million at the end of May. We're burning about a million dollars a month. That's for two drills, helicopter support, GNA. So it's not too bad. We've got no flow through commitments. We're working on hard dollars. And by the by the time the year is done, or when we reach our 30,000 meter goal, we should have about, I, I would estimate five to eight million still in the bank. So a healthy, healthy bank account to go into next year. Okay. Okay. Fine. Well, like James, I know you're you're busy. You're on the shop floor. People are, are, are you know, um, there to there to talk to you, and you're there to sell. So I'll let you get back to it. But um, perhaps um, once the dust has settled a bit, let's let's sit down. I can um, get into the detail of what's actually happening on the ground. And uh, good luck with this week. Okay. Yep. Sounds good. Thank you very much, sir. Take care, Matt.